the attributes of a linked list can be changed. Let's take a minute to review the linked list class that we defined before. We called it linked. We represented an empty linked list using some empty sequence. But the most important part was that we constructed a linked list from a first and a rest, where a first is the first element of the sequence and the rest is the rest of the sequence. Then we defined, using special method names, how to select an item, how to compute the length, and how to print out a linked list. So if I create one linked list with 3, 5, and 7 in it, and another one containing 7 and 9, I can print out s, I can change the first element of s to be 2, I could even change the rest of the rest of s to be t, at which point I have s as 2, 5, 7, 9, where I replaced the linked list containing only 7 with the one containing 7 and 9. Attribute assignment statements can change the first and rest attributes of a link, and the rest of a linked list can actually contain the linked list that you're changing as a sublist. So if I create 1, 2, 3, which conceptually is something like s is bound to a linked list with a first and rest attribute, where first is 1 and the rest is this whole linked list, and eventually we reach the empty. Now this is not an environment diagram. This is because we don't use those for classes that we have defined. But it is, conceptually, what kind of structure you're building when you use the link class. OK, so if I change the first to 5, and I change t to s.rest, and then I change t.rest to s, what have I done? Well, I've created a linked list where the first element is 5, which is what I set it as. But what is s.rest.rest.rest.rest.rest.rest.first? Think about it for a second. The answer is 2. And why is that? Well, here's the structure I created. S was originally 1, 2, 3. And then it was 5, 2, 3. And then I bound T to the rest of that list, which was 2, 3. But then I changed the rest of T to be S. And that created a cycle. That cycle was in T, and it was in S. So t is now the list that starts with 2, and then 5, and then 2, and then 5. And s is the list that starts with 5, and then 2, and then 5, and then 2, and then 5, and then 2, etc. So if I get the rest of 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 s, I end up at the list starting with 2. And I get the first element of that. That actually gives me the number 2. Like I said, there's nothing new in this lecture. But we are using the old ideas that we've created in new ways, and that happens on exams all the time.